a lot of you out there. Thank you, President Turner, Provost Laboa, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests, proud parents and families. And most of all, thank you to the class of 2021. It is such an honor to be here. I am so excited for all of you. What an incredible accomplishment that you've all achieved. Congratulations. This is also very, very exciting for me. I've always wanted to attend an SMU graduation, to wear a cap and gown, and now, thanks to you, I can. This is actually my first time on a university graduation stage. I did not graduate on time, so I never got to participate in these incredible graduation festivities with all of my friends and family. So I'll be cheersing to you and with you maybe at the Barley House after this. I fell in love with SMU the very first time I visited campus. How could you not? My mother went, went here, my grandmother went here, my sister went here. This is a special place for me, just like it is for you. It felt like home from the minute I stepped foot on campus, and today it still feels like home. SMU has been a true launch pad for me. I'm certain that it will be for you too. The friends that I've made here are still my best friends to this day. Some of them are up in that box right now. After my first visit to SMU in high school, I loved it so much that I kept a postcard that was given out to prospective students while touring campus. I hung it on the bulletin board in my childhood bedroom. It was a photo of the boulevard, that boulevard right there, with the little red pinpoint. It said, picture yourself here. It was my daily motivation. I saw it every morning before school and every day when I returned. I fell asleep dreaming about attending this incredible university. Going to SMU was my first big goal. It was like a pin on a map for where I wanted my life to go. It was a dream destination. So when you picture yourself somewhere, you truly cannot overestimate the power of that manifestation. I set a goal, worked hard towards it, navigated a lot of ups and downs, but I got here. And here we are today, exactly where that red pinpoint was on that postcard, and now I'm delivering your commencement address. If that isn't proof that when you drop a pin in your mind or in your heart of where you want to go and what you want to achieve and you work really hard to get there, you embrace the ups and downs, the bumps and all, it can outpace your wildest dreams. I wish I could say it was just as simple as staring at a postcard or a pin on a wall to stand here today. That would make this speech really easy and allow you to get back to your brunches and your celebrations. That said, I promise to keep this brief. But the truth is, the postcard, or rather the goal, is just the first step. Nothing in life comes that simple. And that's what makes the destination so worth it. For one thing, when I pictured myself here, I pictured myself here not doing any form of public speaking under any circumstances. Certainly not in front of all of you because I was terrified of public speaking. It gave me nightmares. The thought of speaking in front of any audience was impossible to me. And avoiding public speaking was going just fine until I signed up for a screenwriting class my sophomore year. It was my most favorite class with my most favorite professor until I found out that the grade was determined by presenting our screenplays to the entire class. So I did what any terrified public speaker would do, and I got a doctor's note excusing me from the assignment. <laughs> but my professor pretty much ripped it up. She told me that I could do it, that I would do it. She told me that she believed in me and that I should believe in me, even though it terrified me. I'm still scared if you can't tell. She said that I would stand up and speak. So I faced my fear, I stood up, and I read my script. I made an A. That professor, Kelly Hurd, is here today, and as fate would have it, unbeknownst to me at the time, years later, she would become my mother-in-law, the grandmother to my child, and why I can stand here today and address you without fainting. So, as you can see, I've taken this lesson to heart. I was terrified, but I did what any good student and future daughter-in-law would do, and I listened. I believed in me. I leaned into my fear and I did it anyway. So let's commence. It is my privilege to publicly speak and celebrate you today, the amazing class of 2021. What you've achieved this year is nothing short of remarkable. 
you've navigated uncharted waters and gone through one of the most devastating chapters in modern history, and you still managed to graduate. Let that sink in. When I was asked to speak to you today, I did what any newbie commencement speaker would do, and I spent the bulk of the last few weeks Googling the best commencement speecher, speak, speeches ever written. And they were all incredibly inspiring. And I thought to myself, how am I ever going to follow Admiral McRaven's incredible message that if you want to change the world, you have to start by making your bed? Or Steve Jobs' heroic speech about coming to terms with his mortality and concluding that there's no reason not to follow your heart? Or Oprah Winfrey at Harvard, or Oprah at Wellesley, or Oprah at Stanford, or Oprah anywhere? So as I was struggling with how to follow those acts, all of a sudden, my speech just wrote itself. I've never followed anybody else's act. And my message to you today is, neither should you. Be your own act. As you enter the next chapter and for the rest of your lives, you're going to be told that there's a way things are done, a way things should be done, a way things have always been done, and that you should follow others' lead, do like they did, be like her, be like him, be like them, or even be like me. But that's not what it's about. It's about being like you, because you are your own act, and there is only one of those. If you want to fulfill your greatest potential in life, the key is to do things your way. Rather than laying out some script for you today that you should follow or give you a blueprint to some version of success, my goal is simply to tell you four lessons that I've learned along the way about how to be your own act. Each of these lessons are completely free, and you can practice them every day. The first lesson is simple. Believe in yourself. Everything begins and ends with the way you feel about you. So make sure you believe in yourself. The moment you decide you do is the moment you unlock your power. This is when you become your own act. In order to believe in yourself, you have to have conviction in your own opinion and trust your own intuition. You will sway like a tree in the wind if you allow the opinions of others to shape your identity, your decisions, or your life. Not letting the opinions of others hold you back is truly a requirement for believing in yourself. Being your own act means you're going to be judged. You will have naysayers, and likely many of them, because you are doing things your way, not the way of everyone else. But that's what will set you apart in life. I had to learn this the hard way. I've had more people judge me, more mean tweets and DMs, labeling and criticizing me than I can count. In fact, I bet there are some circulating right now about this speech. I've learned how to use critics as my motivators. They inspire me to keep going, to keep pushing for the things I believe in and the things I want to change. They reinforce my conviction in myself, and they remind me to keep doing things my way. You can do the same. If I'd let the opinions of others hold me back, I would not be on this stage today. I also would not have had the stamina, the energy, and the fire to continue so many times along the way. I've used this as my fuel to motivate and propel me. And I still do this every single day. You'll also realize that time spent worrying about what some other person says or thinks about you is truly wasted time and energy. You can put that to better use. When I brought Tinder to this campus, I was laughed at. I was told that no college kid would ever use a dating app. When I launched Bumble here, there were plenty of people who insisted it would never work. They said they liked Tinder and they didn't need another dating app. They said that having women take the lead in relationships was going against thousands of years of tradition. They said there was no way it would ever be a success. I used that as motivation. And I carried on. I believed in myself. Everyone is always going to have an opinion about the choices you make, but the only one that really matters is your own. My second lesson is don't let fear hold you back. Anything worth doing is going to be scary, just like it was scary for me to stand up and speak publicly. It's not scary to follow the herd, and the pun is intended there, I had to, but being your own act is brave. It requires facing your fears every single day. I've faced my fears more times than I can count, whether that's standing up for myself, standing up for others, taking my company public, or even standing here today. Fear is an opportunity for growth and strength, 
for pushing yourself to be the best act you can be. The third lesson is be kind. You have an impact every single day. Make sure that it's a positive one. I'm sure you've heard the quote from Maya Angelou that said, people will forget what you did, they'll forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And that is true. The way you make people feel will stay with them forever. It can make or break you getting a job. It can open or close doors, and it can sway things for you 10 years down the road. Take it from me. Kindness creates opportunity. So put that power to positive use. Never skimp on a simple act of generosity or small gesture of kindness. The world will tell you to be hard, tough, critical, defensive, and even rude, but don't listen. Be your own act. Take the high road, forgive, don't hold grudges, operate from a place of pure intentions. Do the right thing even when it's the hard thing. That is the truest measure of kindness. Dedicating yourselves to improving someone else's life, no matter who they are, and expecting nothing in return is an investment that never fails. It will compound and come back around to you. It's the best investment you will ever make. Making someone's day feels better than just about anything else. That brings me to my final lesson, which is make the first move. In order to follow a dream, it means you have to work the dream. For me, a dream has always come in the form of seeking a solution to a problem. For example, I hated that my friends and I were told not to text guys first on this very campus or approach them first at Barley House or the bars on Greenville or wherever else we went in the world. My dream was to change this archaic rule. That was another red pin that I dropped into a map of where I wanted to go and what I wanted to achieve. Just like getting to SMU, the thing about dreams is that they're nothing without making them come to life. That's just simply called an idea. To be your own act, you have to take control of your dreams, of your struggles, of your ideas, and make sure that they happen. If 2020 revealed all the ways that this world is broken, it's people like you, class of 2021, that will find all the ways to fix it. Your generation is the most diverse in our history with strong convictions about what's right and wrong. You're not afraid to question how things have always been done. You live your values. And in the process, you're pushing the wheel of progress, creating a society that is more sustainable, more open-minded, and more just. It's going to be hard, but you know that already. You're going to have to put in the work. There are no cheat sheets, and there are no magic wands. But it all starts with making a first move. I made the first move on this campus when I was a junior in college and launched my first business. It didn't grow to the scale of Bumble, but it was a start. It was a first move. I sold tote bags and donated the proceeds to help clean up the Gulf oil spill in 2010. And I went to the sororities and used my network, the network that I still have to this day, to make that happen. Go, Kappa. <laughs> I started somewhere, and that somewhere was here. I made the first move on this campus more times than I can count, like getting some of the very first downloads for a then unknown app called Tinder that I co-founded. I did that right where that red pinpoint was on my postcard back in 2012. I rallied a few of my best friends that went to SMU, I got them to wear Tinder t-shirts that I ordered online, and I convinced them to hand out flyers with me that we made in the Meadows building in a friend, Danny Gersh, who's here today's uh, journalism class. I made the first move when I came back from the ashes of leaving Tinder as it continued on an absolute rocket ship after helping build the company for two years. I came back here in 2014 to my launch pad with that same network to launch Bumble. I made the first move and I asked you, your peers, all around campus to make the first move with me. I asked them to be brave and to send the first message. They were scared because that's not how things worked, but we told them we believed in them and they, they should believe in themselves. Even though it terrified them, we said they would speak up and they would send the first message and they did. Bumble now has over 100 million downloads. Women have made the first move almost 2 billion times. It all started with a first move made on this very campus. Remember that. When you see a problem you know needs fixing, when you have a dream that needs building, make the first move. 
I don't think any graduating class has ever been better prepared. You've already proven your adaptability, your resilience, and your very strong spirit. Amidst the global pandemic and, as we talked about earlier, the snowstorm in Texas, you found new ways to connect and help each other. You pushed SMU, your administration, your fellow students to do better, to be better. Your eyes are open to the world around you and your own potential to improve it, which gives me confidence, not just in the future, but in a brighter future for all of us. As you prepare to walk off this stage or field into the next act of your lives, I hope you will all take a mental postcard of wherever you want to go next and drop a red pin in the middle of that dream. And remind yourself every day that you will get there. You got here today, that means you can truly picture yourself anywhere, work hard to get there, and arrive at your destination. I have no doubt in my mind, and I believe in you. I know I'm not much older than you are, but I'm also a relatively new parent, so these days I find myself reading children's books instead of textbooks. And having a son has made me really think of the future in a different way. When I think of him, I think of the impact that he will have on the world. His future is bright, just like yours. So every night I read my son a book before bed. It's a beautiful book about incredible women who changed the course of history. And it ends with advice that I don't think you're ever too young or too old to hear. It says, wherever you go, whatever you do, be bold and dream big. The world is waiting for you. So pony up, class of 2021. This may be the end of your first act, but it's truly just the beginning of many to come. Remember to believe in yourselves, face your fears, be kind, and always make the first move. Most importantly, be your own act, because the world is waiting for you. Congratulations, and thank you.